Okay, this is Reese Wallace with Mickey. Hi. Okay, Mickey, so how did your scouting career start? Well, it's not the longest of stories, but it's kind of a long one. Uh, so my dad was a Cub Scout leader when I was born, and my brother was in Cub Scouts. And since he was the Cub Pack leader, my dad brought me to a meeting when I was two weeks old. And it just kind of started from there. I was a Girl Scout when I was younger and then like an honorary Cub Scout. Um, went on all the trips with all the boys and did Girl Scouts. Hated it. And so then I joined Venturing when I was 14. And that's kind of how it started. Gotcha. So Scouting's a family affair for you. It, it started as a family affair, but now it's just kind of me. Oh, that's still good. So tell me about your adventuring experience. Sorry, you're talking about patches. Um, goodbye, Matthew. <laughs> you know this. Um, so I guess my my v venturing experience. I joined when I was fourteen. I found out about it when I was twelve at I think like a Cub Scout day camp that I was running. I was helping run, and um. They were like, hey, you should join venturing. And I was like, that sounds like a grand idea. So the moment I turned 14, like a few weeks after my 14th birthday, I was like, yeah, venturing is exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> I joined Crew 1776 in Philadelphia. Uh, we were a pretty active crew at that point in time. It's slowly gone down the rails since, uh, since joining in about 2016. But it's where my venturing journey began, and I still kind of hold that near and dear to my heart, even though it's not something that I oft, even though I don't often like go to crew meetings anymore or interact with anybody from my unit, it's still a place that is special because it's where my venturing journey started. Very good. So I'm glad you had a good adventuring experience. It's my understanding you were the VOA president. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so I've done a lot of venturing stuff in terms of outside of my crew. Uh, so I started in my crew as vice president of programs, so planning any events that we had, um, weekend trips, day trips, whatever the case was. And then in, I think, 2017, I decided to help the VOA, uh, which is the Venturing Officers Association in Cradle of Liberty Council. And I was on as a vice president. We were trying to have the most successful year that we could with myself and the president at the time. Um, we didn't kind of, everything didn't go as planned, but that was perfectly okay. And I was just kind of learning. And then in 2018, I was president. And in 2019, I was president. And in 2020, I was also president of the VOA. So it's it was a two to three year in the running. Um, and I loved every moment of it, I got to work with many different people, most of them now who are in the, OA, uh, in the OA that I see quite often and consider some of my closest venturing friends or just closest friends in scouting in general. It's been really nice to work with them on the council level. And I've also worked on the area level before areas kind of were diminished from the order of things. <laughs> um, so I was the area vice president of program for area five doing similar things, planning events. I helped plan our Oh Shoot, Let's Go to the Beach. It was like our big Area 5 event that we always did. It was hosted uh, within, I think, Jersey Shore in that area. They'd hang out at the beach, have a shooting event at uh, City Scout Reservation. And on from there, and last year, I was uh, the National Service Territory 13 president and got to run and help the venturing program and all the councils uh, within NST 13, which was most of eastern Pennsylvania and all of New Jersey. Wow, that's quite a lot. That's, that's impressive. So I also understand you were on camp staff. Could you tell me about that experience? Uh, yeah, so I worked on camp staff at Rodney Scout Reservation, which is in Delmarva Council, so not Cradle of Liberty, but somebody from Cradle of Liberty brought me down to Delmarva, so like it kind of all ties back, and there's a few people from Delmarva who work at Rodney who also worked in Cradle of Liberty. They're very kind of close-knit councils, and I worked down at Rodney in 2016 as a CIT, and liked working in all the areas down there at the end of the summer decided i wanted to work in aquatics because rowing and lifeguarding was a big thing that i did at that point in time uh still what i do now and from 2017 forward i worked in aquatics specifically at the boatyard which is our waterfront where we teach rowing canoeing kayaking all of those fun things 
Andrew Gear is currently taking my aquatic certification right now. Um, but I always worked at the boatyard, loved every moment of it. In 2020, I still worked at camp, even though it was our COVID year. I taught classes online and got to experience a ton of different things. Uh, I taught bird study, engineering, communications, a bunch of different stuff that is not rowing, canoeing, or kayaking. And... I honestly didn't hate it. I thought it was going to be uh, quite the adventure because we were working from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day teaching classes. Nine o'clock engineering is not a fun, uh, not a fun batch to teach at nine o'clock at night. Um, but then in 2021, I was hired as the boatyard director. Uh, I would have been in 2020 if the year had gone as planned. And boatyard director was something I kind of always looked for because I'd always worked in the area. I was kind of set for the for the moment to happen. And it was really great. I think a lot of people enjoyed me in that position, I hope. Um, I still know people, I was, like, I was here today and Paul, who works at Resica, was like, yeah, there was this leader who was here a few weeks ago who was like raving about you and how you worked down at Rodney and how you were like energetic but also aggressive. I don't know if that was a good thing or whatever the case was, but I guess I left a mark, which is good. Uh, I don't work on camp staff currently, and but that doesn't mean I'm completely done with camp staff because I can always go back next year for a 100th. Shout out 1923, 2023 centennial year for us at Rodney Sky Reservation. That's very exciting. Congrats on all those things from boathouse director to successfully being on staff during a COVID year. That's quite a feat. Yeah, six plus years or something like that. It would have been seven years. Wow, that's impressive. That's about how long I was on camp staff. So we're we're kind of twinsies there. So now tell me, how did you get into the OA? Um, so it started with my brother. My brother was uh, what we like to call a sash and dash. And I kind of made it my point once I joined scouting to not be like my brother in any of the respects that he was in scouting. Uh, I don't think many people knew him for who he was at all. Um, he didn't have the best reputation, but he didn't have a bad one. And so I kind of just wanted to be different from my brother if anybody ever knew. And so I knew he was a sash and dash. And I was like, well, when I, whenever I get the opportunity, I'm going to be involved and not just join and go. And so in 2019, when they first allowed crews and Scouts BSA troops to hold elections, we were the first crew uh, in our council to hold elections. I think we did it a few, two or three weeks after everything was opened up. And I was elected along with two other members of my crew, um, people who I was really close with at that point in time. And we all went and did our ordeal in May of 2019. And just kind of went on from there. They are currently what we like to call Sash and Dash. But they got their brotherhood. But they don't do much. And I still have stayed heavily involved. Because I think it's a it's a part of scouting that I never thought I would get to experience. And so now that I get to experience, I don't want to leave it anytime sooner than I have to. Wow, that's quite an experience. I, I like your determination to not be like your brother. <laughs> So, what was your ordeal like? I I actually quite enjoyed my ordeal. Um, I slept at the falls, which was uh, very cool. I slept very uh, near the other girl who I was doing my ordeal with, and we were like, did not think we were going to sleep, thought we were going to stay up the entire night, but genuinely passed out, and we're like, all right, time to wake up and just kind of get things going. Um, I, my ordeal was good ceremonies I got to hang out with a bunch of friends that I had knew before going into the OA and hung out by the falls at night and just kind of relaxed with the new friends I had made turn around but I'm glad that you're here with us and you're so active and you do all the good stuff that you do so thank you Mickey for your time and for everything you do for scouting oh uh, thank you <laughs> watch watch Watch, watch.